Hey what's up guys welcome to another video in which we are going to learn about recursion example in java programming so guys a method that calls itself is known as a recursive method so guys it can so happen that we have certain requirements wherein we want to call the same method multiple times and in such a way that it is a nested call that means a method is calling itself from inside its own body so guys this method is called as a recursive method since it is calling itself from inside its body and it should have some termination as well in order to close that call at some point of time so guys we will check this with the help of example so this process is known as recursion so for example we are going to see a factorial of a number in this particular video so guys let me show you first what the factorial means so on calculator what we are going to do is let's say we have a 5 factorial so we provide 5 followed by this factorial sign so as we can see factorial of 5 is 120 now how the factorial of 5 is 120 now guys the factorial is nothing but it is the multiplication of all the numbers before the number 5 so the factorial of 5 will be it will be 5 multiplied by the number before 5 that is 4 and then multiply by the number before 4 is 3 and then multiply by the number before 3 is 2 and then multiply by the number before 2 is 1 so we provide 1 and this is the factorial that is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so guys similarly what will be the factorial of 10 so what we will have to do is we will take the number 10 and then we will multiply it by 9 and then followed by multiply by 8 then 7 then 6 so guys this is a long procedure when we want to check the factorial of let's say 15 or 20 or let's say we have the number as 100 so it will be a tedious task so what we can simply do on the calculator is we have the number 10 and then followed by a factorial so it gives us 36 28 800 as the factorial of 10 so guys this we are going to understand with the help of java program so let me just go to the code over here i'll just remove the previous lines of codes now guys in order to find the factorial of a number we can use a recursive method so what we will do is we will first define a recursive method over here which will return the integer data type so we will have the integer data type the integer data type will be the result of that factorial and then we have the name of the method that is factorial and it takes an integer let's say the integer will be number so this number will be provided whenever we are going to call the factorial method and we are going to find the factorial of this number that is provided to this method and inside this method what we will have is the very first thing is we are going to have the termination as we have seen the factorial calculation includes the multiplication of this number followed by the number which is number minus 1 and then followed by number minus 2 and then we have number minus 3 and so on until the number reaches to 1 so what we will do is we will take n multiply by we have to do n minus 1 so we will put n minus 1 over here so n minus 1 and then followed by multiply by n minus 2 so we have n minus 2 but guys over here we don't know what will be the number value so if it is 1 or 2 then we can easily find the factorial using this formula if the number is very small but what if the number is let's say 10 or 15 or 20 so in this case what we will have to do is we will have to multiply this n so n multiply by and we have to call this method again from inside the body of this method so i'll just copy this and paste this over here now when we call this method we again have to pass a new number and now this number will be n minus 1 so guys what we will do is we will put n minus 1 so guys why we have done this even if you have not understood till now i will make it more easy just stick with me till the end of this video and you will understand everything so guys what we are doing over here is we are providing n multiply by factorial of n minus 1 guys one important thing over here this is not n but this is a number so since we are passing the num over here so instead of n it is num and then guys what we will do is we will have to return this so we will provide the return keyword over here so as we can see the red errors are gone for now and then guys there should be a termination condition as well as i have told you so the termination condition is in this way so when the number that is num is equal to equal to one we will have to return one let me make it more easy for you if you have not understood so far so i'll just open notepad over here so guys what we are trying to do over here is the very first thing let's say the number value is 5 so this 5 will be passed over here to this factorial method so we have factorial 5 
Now what is happening is the control flow will come over here. It will check whether the number value is five or not. No in this case. So it will go to this statement that is return num multiply by factorial num minus one. So what is the expression over here? We have five multiply by again this factorial will be called that is this method over here will be called. So I'll just copy this and paste this over here. But now the value will be num minus one. So num minus one will be over here. It was five. So five minus one, it will be four. So guys, this method will be called with the number four. So now again, the control flow comes over here. It will check whether number is equal to one or not. No, in this case. So again, it will be four multiplied by factorial of num minus one. So what will happen is it will take four as the number multiply by factorial of four minus one. In this case, it will be three over here. So three. And then again, is the number equal to one? No, in this case. So what is going to happen over here is again, the three will be taken as the number over here, multiply by the factorial, but three minus one will be taken as two. And now again, guys, what will happen is the control flow comes back again over here and checks whether this num two, is it equal to one? No, in this case. So again, it will go over here, num multiply by factorial num minus one. So what will happen? We have two multiply by factorial of one. So guys, finally, this will be the last call probably. That's because we are passing the number one and then the control flow comes over here. It will check if num equal to equal to one. Yes, in this case, and it returns one over here. As you can see, we are returning one and using this integer return type, the one is getting returned to this factorial num minus one. So guys, the result of this factorial one will be one. So over here, what will happen is one will get returned. And now the multiplication of two multiplied by one will be returned to this factorial that is two, which was called. So two multiplied by one is what two. So again, we will provide the value two over here. So guys, what we are doing over here is we are backtracking to the original call that was factorial five. So three multiplied by two is six. So factorial three will be six over here. So six multiplied by four is 24. So factorial four will be 24 over here and 24 multiplied by five will be 120. So this result will be 120, which was the last return. And this return will return the 120 to the main method from where we will call this factorial five. So guys, let us understand this. Let's say we have int and then followed by, let's say we have the variable name as answer. And then let's say we have this variable name factorial and then we provide the number five. So we are trying to find the factorial of a number five. Now guys, we are getting a red underline over here. It says cannot make a static reference to a non-static method factorial. So since we are trying to access a method, which is a non-static method from a static method, we have to change this to a static method. So I'll just go over here and change factorial to static. So this keyword was added and now there is no red underline. Now guys, what we will do is we will just print the answer. So factorial is and then we will provide this answer variable. So let me just save this file and try running this code. So as we can see, factorial is 120. Now guys, let us check what was the factorial of 10. It was 36, 28, 800. So I'll just provide 10 over here instead of five. Let me just save this file and try running this code. So as we can see 36, 28, 800 and the same value we are getting over here. What will be the factorial of 12? So I'll just provide 12 over here. So it is 47, 90, 0, 1, 600. So I'll just provide 12 over here. Let me just save this file and try running this code. So it is 47, 90, 0, 1, 600, the same number as we are getting over here. And guys, in this way, we can easily use recursion in order to provide a factorial of a number. Now guys, this was one of the use cases of a recursive method. There are many other use cases in which you can use the recursive methods. And it is very much important whenever you are going to actually work on your requirements. So guys, that's it in this video. Please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well. The next video that we are going to talk about is instance of operator in Java programming. So stay tuned.